President DeJoya, Cardinal Wuerl, Father Hussey, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Georgetown University. We have assembled here today during the observance of the 75th anniversary of the foundation of the Archdiocese of Washington to confer upon his eminence Donald Cardinal Wuerl, our highest honor, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Georgetown University, in turn, is honored by his presence here today and by his acceptance of this degree. Please remain standing for the singing of Vene Creator Spiritus, performed by the Georgetown University Concert Choir under the direction of Frederick Binkholder, visiting assistant professor of music in the Department of Performing Arts, and for the opening prayer, which will be offered by Jane Golden Belford, a graduate of Georgetown University Law Center, who served for many years as the first woman and the first layperson to hold the position of Chancellor of the Archdiocese of Washington. In the Gospel reading for today's liturgy, Jesus tells us, no one who lights a lamp conceals it with a vessel or sets it under a bed. Rather, he places it on a lampstand so that those who enter may see the light. Proclaiming the joy of the Gospel and bringing Christ's light, love, and hope to the world has been the mission of the Catholic Church for two millennia. This evening, we commemorate two special moments in the history of that faith journey, the 75th anniversary of the Archdiocese of Washington and the 225th anniversary of the selection of Georgetown's founder, John Carroll, as the first Catholic bishop in the United States. We also gather here to honor Cardinal Donald Wuerl, the Archbishop of Washington, a caring shepherd, faithful teacher, wise administrator, and holy priest, whose Episcopal ministry manifests the living presence of Jesus Christ to all around him. In gratitude for that ministry, and for all those who helped to build the church, and who continue to bring the light of Christ to our world, let us now pray. Good and gracious God, you have called us to be, as Cardinal Worrell has said, an epiphany of the Lord to those we encounter, a bright shining light so that we might lead others to Christ as the great star of Bethlehem led the wise men to him on Christmas day. Bless all gathered here this evening. Help us, Lord, to be a lamp, not hidden or buried, but willing to radiate the light of faith. Give us the courage to be persons who bring light and give light 
to those we encounter. Fill us with your presence and help us shine your light into every corner of the culture and transform the world around us. Loving God, grant that we may proclaim the gospel in word and deed, glorifying you on each step of our journey of faith. Inspire us and strengthen our resolve to let the gospel be the measure and guide of our decisions so that wherever we work, study, and live, we may be signs of your loving presence. Guide the mission of Georgetown University and bless its leaders, faculty, staff, and students with your grace that they may continue to be instruments of your love and peace for the greater glory of God. We ask you also to bless the Archdiocese of Washington that this local church may continue to witness the love of God and the love of neighbor. In a special way, we ask your blessings on your faithful servant, Cardinal Whirl. May his Episcopal ministry that this university lifts up in recognition today continue to be an inspiration for all who seek to hear the echoes of Christ in the voice of his shepherds. All of this we pray in your name. Amen. Please be seated. Our founder, Most Reverend John Carroll, first Archbishop of Baltimore, and first Catholic bishop in the United States, took legal possession of the land on this hilltop in 1789, and we mark that as our founding date. Our first student, the future North Carolina Congressman William Gaston, arrived in 1791, and our first bachelor's degrees were not awarded until 1817. During the years of our establishment, the Jesuits who founded us were suppressed by papal edict until Pope Pius VII completely restored the order 200 years ago on August 7th, 1814. That same year saw the British attack on the city of Baltimore and their invasion of Washington as part of the so-called War of 1812. And for a time, the college lived in great fear that it would be overrun. But we escaped and thrived. It was in 1815 that with enrollments passing the 100 mark, the college's president, Father John Grassi of the Society of Jesus, asked then Congressman Gaston to present a petition for a federal charter, a document that still today sanctions the academic business we do here. This coming March 1st, 2015, we will mark the 200th anniversary of the signing of our charter by the President of the United States. So it is our custom to initiate academic ceremonies with a reading of that charter to discharge that office, I have the honor to introduce Mr. Edward M. Quinn, Secretary of the University. An act concerning the College of Georgetown in the District of Columbia. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that it shall and may be lawful for such persons as now are, or from time to time may be, the president and directors of the College of Georgetown within the District of Columbia, to admit any of the students belonging to said college or other persons meriting academical honors to any degree in the faculties, arts, sciences, and liberal professions to which persons are usually admitted 
in other colleges and universities of the United States, and to issue in an appropriate form the diplomas or certificates which may be requisite to testify to the admission of such degree. Signed, Langdon Chivas, Speaker of the House of Representatives, John Guyard, President Pro Tempore of the Senate, approved March 1st, 1815, James Madison. The honorary degree citation will be read by Mr. Paul Tagliabue, Chair of the Georgetown University Board of Directors. Georgetown University today honors Donald Cardinal Worrell, Archbishop of Washington, for his extraordinary example of faith and service and his leadership in spreading the joy of the gospel to present and future generations. Throughout his lifetime, Cardinal Worrell has demonstrated a deep commitment to his catechetical and teaching ministry, to compassion for the poor, to making Catholic education accessible to countless individuals, to the moral imperative of religious liberty in a pluralistic society, and to the new evangelization and the proclamation of the gospel message to an increasingly secular world. Throughout the Cardinal's ministry, he has been first and foremost a teacher and pastor, repeatedly proclaiming the message that, quote, from the pulpit we are expected to proclaim the gospel message in an unvarnished and clear manner in all its fullness. But then we are to go out to meet people where they are and try to bring them a little closer to Christ." Unquote. When named a cardinal in 2010, Cardinal World declared that this designation today is an honor for this church, the church in Washington, the church in the nation's capital. And so today, in recognizing all that Cardinal World has done to nurture and spread the faith in service of the people of God, we also celebrate the vibrancy and impact of this church here in Washington to which Cardinal Worrell has proved a loving shepherd. In 2014, we mark two anniversaries, the 225th anniversary of the selection of John Carroll, Georgetown's founder, as the first bishop in the United States, and the 75th anniversary of the Archdiocese of Washington. As we do so, we also recognize the historical legacy of which the Cardinal is a faithful steward. From the time of John Carroll, the Catholic community in this region has been blessed with leaders of extraordinary vision and dedication, qualities that have shaped this as a community rooted in prayer, marked by a spirit of generosity and sacrifice, and deeply committed to care for the poor and the education of leaders for the church, our community, and our nation. In Cardinal World, we see manifested this very legacy of faith and service, connecting this Washington community with those generations before us, those to come, and all those living and working in goodwill around the world. Cardinal World has written, quote, as witnesses to Christ, his gospel, his kingdom, each and every one of us can make a difference. And it is the very difference he has made through his life of faith and service that we celebrate today. In recognition of his leadership, example, and ministering to our spiritual family in Washington, D.C. and around the world, Georgetown University, with respect and admiration, proclaims Cardinal, Donald Cardinal Worrell, Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa.
So let's make this official. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University, I officially confer upon Donald Cardinal Worrell the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. Congratulations. Thank you. In honor of the Archdiocese of Washington and an observance of the 75th anniversary of its foundation, the Georgetown University Concert Choir will now perform How Lovely Is Thy Dwelling Place by J.L. Macbeth Bain to the tune of Brother James Eyre. Thank you very much for that musical interlude. I now have the privilege to present the 48th president of Georgetown University, John J. DeJoya. Your Eminence, Father Hussey, honored guests, members of the Georgetown community and the Archdiocese of Washington, welcome. We are very grateful that you could join us today for this very special occasion. I wish to add my words of appreciation to the members of our Georgetown University Concert Choir for their very special performances during this ceremony. Thank you. We come together today in Gaston Hall to recognize the contributions of an extraordinary leader, teacher, and man of faith. You have already heard this afternoon about his deep devotion to the church and to pastoral ministry, about his eminent service and commitment to education, about his compassion and care for the poor and most vulnerable. And you have heard of his stewardship 
of the Archdiocese of Washington now celebrating its 75th year. It's fitting that we gather here in this historic hall in the oldest Catholic and Jesuit university in the United States, in this place founded by the first Catholic bishop in the United States to honor the faith in service of Cardinal Wuerl and to reflect on the history, tradition, and faith that inextricably ties our community on this hilltop with the faith community of this archdiocese. We honor Cardinal Wuerl here in this hall, this important space for dialogue and discourse in our nation because of what he means to our university community, to our spiritual community, and to our nation. We begin with a sense of place, of being together in community, of gathering for a shared purpose. In celebrating Cardinal World today, we look to place to help characterize the depth of his contributions and service. By place, I mean the physical spaces where he has taught, where he has ministered, where he leads us in worship, and we look to his stewardship of our spiritual home, our understanding and experience of faith. In his service to the church, whether in, in Pittsburgh, Seattle, Rome, or here in Washington, Cardinal Wuerl has opened the doors of the church, welcoming new and returning believers, and he has gone out in his pastoral ministry to meet people where they are, to invite them to find a home in the church. We see this sense of welcome come alive in his work here in Washington in an archdiocese that offers mass in more than 20 languages to a community of more than 620,000 Catholics, a community that continues to grow. We can see this invitation to faith in his pastoral letter written in 2012 entitled, The Church, Our Spiritual Home where he speaks of the church as, quote, a unique spiritual reality, the home of God's word and sacraments. In a book published this past year, The Church Unlocking the Secrets to the Places Catholics Call Home, with his co-author, Mike Aquilina, he spoke of the building of a church in a Latin American village and of the spirit of faith that is embedded in that place writing that they had, quote, built and furnished their church with love, as Catholics everywhere do and always have done. And we see this in his work to build places of spiritual formation in St. John Paul II Seminary that he established in 2011 for seminarians in the Archdiocese of Washington, to, as he said in his homily at the dedication ceremony, quote, prepare to be priests of this millennium, to be the agents of the Holy Spirit renewing the face of the earth and to be the voice of the new evangelization, calling all people near and far to embrace the Lord Jesus. In each of these dimensions, in the places that we gather and in the spiritual home that we share, the depth of Cardinal World's service humility, and love for all of God's people provides us with a model and a sense of consolation of the good work being done on behalf of our faith. It is an honor for us to celebrate this pastor, teacher, leader, and his contributions at this moment of significance for the Archdiocese of Washington Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my honor to present our most recent alumnus, <laughs> His Eminence, Donald Cardinal Worrell. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before anything else, I want to thank President DeJoya, not only for this extraordinary moment, 
but for his thoughtfulness together with the chairman of the board, Paul Tagribu, for the honor of receiving this extraordinary honor. I am truly, truly touched. And I also want to express my appreciation to Father Hussey as he continues the great tradition of the Society of Jesus here in our part of the world. Not all that long ago, I was asked by a reporter what I thought of the church, and given the context of this question, and especially educational institutions bring to our, our culture, our society. And that question is a particularly pertinent one, as today we gather at Georgetown University in this year that commemorates the 225th anniversary of the Episcopal ordination of the founder of this university. It's also the 225th year of the date, 1789, that is so generously stamped everywhere. <laughs> But it's also our anniversary as an archdiocese, 75, and I hope you're all going to say, my, you don't look it. <laughs> but the two, the two come together. Pope Francis offers us a concrete answer to that question. What do you think you bring? What does this institution, what does the church bring to our culture? Pope Francis says, the Catholic Church, which is the home and the inspiration for this university and which is expressed locally in this archdiocese, brings today what it has always brought for 2,000 years. It brings us the possibility of an encounter with Jesus. It offers us an experience of faith. It announces Christ's words of truth and justice and compassion and understanding and love. And it invites us into a way of life. In the joy of the gospel, which is the name of our Holy Father's exhortation, although it might just as well be a description of him, he tells us in our journey, quote, Communion and mission are profoundly interconnected, unquote. Here, the Pope of joy and welcome cites St. John Paul II's letter to the laity. Communion and mission are profoundly interconnected. Communion is expressed in a variety of mission-driven ministries and services. And at the core of our unity is our communion. What explains the diversity of services we provide is simply the way we're called to carry out our mission. And that way varies from profession to profession, institution to institution, but all held together in that communion that is our faith. I invite you to listen to this definition of one expression of mission and how it lives out this rich, life-giving communion of faith. A Catholic university is described in these words, quote, by vocation, the university is dedicated to research, to teaching, and to the education of students who freely associate with their teachers in a common love of knowledge. This definition, as current and as relevant as it is today, and it sounds like it could very well be a statement by the Vatican Congregation for Education, or the Association of Jesuit Colleges and Universities is taken from a letter of Pope Alexander IV to the University of Paris in 1255, over 750 years ago. And it was cited by Saint John Paul II in his Apostolic Constitution on Catholic universities, ex corde ecclesiae, dated August of 
1990. Foundational to Georgetown University are those characteristics referred to in that letter of Alexander, but also recently articulated by the Association of Jesuit Colleges and Universities as the result of a long and extensive self-evaluation they conducted. And that document speaks of the Catholic Jesuit campus and its culture. It says that culture fosters for all on campus a virtuous life characterized by personal responsibility, respect, forgiveness, compassion, a habit of reflection, and the integration of body, mind, and soul. That vision sounds an awful lot like what we read and hear in so much of the gospel. And we shouldn't be surprised. It's a Jesuit and Catholic institution. The church and those institutions, such as this university, that grow out of the heart of the church exist to provide a structured context where all can experience what it means to say that each one of us has a relationship with God. And therefore, because of that, we share a bond with one another. 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to tell us of a truly good, wholesome, right way to live, a way to live that would reflect who he is and what he came to bring to us. That, that way of life that is so uniquely embedded in the church and in the society of Jesus. He taught us that we were made in the image and likeness of God, that there's a God-given plan for every single human being, and that each one of us is capable of making our way through life as part of a great human family, and more importantly, that each one of us has the potential to truly make this a manifestation of God's kingdom. And doesn't this university exist as this church does to say to the next generation, you can make a difference and you truly can renew the face of the earth. During this 75th anniversary year, the archdiocese undertook a process of, of self-evaluation and planning. It was really a daunting thing to do because we received 15,000 recommendations. <laughs> if you ever want to be humbled when you ask, how are we doing? <laughs> and you get boxes and boxes of responses. It was the task of our synod to go through all of that. And on Pentecost of June, we concluded. We concluded with the recognition that this local church continues, continues on the path. Some things we do well, we've learned there are more things we can do better, but we also recognize that in the challenge to be the best church we can be, there are always those engaged in that effort. And I think that's true on this campus. In the effort for this campus to be the best manifestation it can be of everything Jesus calls us to be, everything the Spirit empowers us to be, all of the dreams and vision of a better world. Here, here we realize it's possible. This idea of self-examination and discernment is, of course, familiar to the Jesuit tradition and the foundation of Georgetown University. I think it might also explain why Pope Francis is asking all of us in his marvelous apostolic exhortation, the joy of the gospel, to be open to continual improvement. He says, he speaks of constant conversion 
turning our experience to God, and then in that light, identifying ourselves. Georgetown University, as its origins affirm, is intended to stand in the midst of this community, this wider community, that it embraces and invites to be a part of this process. In the midst of this community, with a simple proclamation, the gospel of Jesus offers us answers to the timeless, perennial, and constant questions of human life. How shall I live? What's the purpose of life? What are the values that will drive me and my steps through life? And even those who do not share our faith come to this university because they know at its heart there is the acceptance of values, values motivated by faith, values that challenge them to be the very best that they can be. In the Sermon on the Mount, we hear of a new way of life and how it involves the merciful, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who mourn the peacemakers, the poor in spirit. And here we're called to be light and salt. And in the same gospel, there's this extraordinary dictum that we should see in one another the very presence of Christ. Jesus' disciples the founders of this university, and so, so many who are a part of the history of this university and the history of this archdiocese are challenged to envision a world where not only the hungry are fed, the thirsty are given drink, the stranger is welcomed, the naked are clothed, but most strikingly, sins can be forgiven and eternal life is pledged. This is the wisdom that motivated and sustained John Carroll, the first bishop of the United States and the founder of this university. And part of the reason this university exists and why it speaks of its Jesuit and Catholic heritage is because here we're comfortable with a community that accepts values, that recognizes the importance of virtue, and that attempts to model what is good and just a truly caring and faith-filled society and what it would be like. In this year then, in which the Archdiocese commemorates its 75th anniversary, manifesting the kingdom of God on the shores of the Potomac, we celebrate the past, but we rejoice in the present moment, and with you we also turn to the future. Each of us bringing to society what Jesus asks of us, a manifestation of his realm of truth and justice and peace and mercy and compassion and kindness and understanding and goodness and above all, love. May our efforts then together, reflected in this honorary degree that you have so graciously bestowed on me, may it reflect in this degree our efforts to manifest God's kingdom, to be something that would always bring a smile to the face of Bishop John Carroll, founder of this university and father of the hierarchy in our country. Thank you. Thank you for this distinct honor and for the university joining us in celebration of our 75th anniversary. Thank you, thank you for being a part of that great dream that it is possible to build a better world. It really is possible to manifest everything that Jesus said we could be and do. To keep alive that dream, every one of us and every one of the students on this campus counts and can really transform this world. Thank you, thank you for the great privilege you have given me today and for the opportunity to share these few thoughts with you. Thank you and God bless you.
Thank you, Your Eminence. Please stand <laughs> and join in the singing of the alma mater and remain standing, if you will, for the benediction, which will be offered by very Reverend Robert Hussey of the Society of Jesus, provincial of the Maryland province. The words and music of the alma mater are printed near the back of your program. In gratitude for Cardinal Whirl and the joy of this celebration, let us pray. Loving God, in our liturgical celebrations this weekend, we heard your prophet Isaiah tell us to seek you. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are your ways above our ways, your thoughts above our thoughts. To approach you is to approach mystery. And so it is good that we seek you, both as university and as church, with the full range of longings and capacities you have bestowed on our humanity. So today, as university, we honor the leader of our local church, Cardinal World. We are so grateful to you, Lord, for his love of Christ's gospel and his proclamation of that good news, for his wise and selfless leadership, for his compassionate shepherding of your people in your name. We ask you to bless him abundantly as a beloved son chosen by you and a disciple sent to guide your church. May he continue to be an instrument of your saving grace. Bless us all in our striving together to discern your presence and your glory and to nourish the sacred dignity and flourishing of all your people. We pray all of this in gratitude to you, our God. Amen. Amen. Kindly remain standing at your places until the academic procession has left Gaston Hall. On behalf of President DeJoya and his eminence, Cardinal Whirl, I thank you deeply for your presence here today. In particular, I want to again thank the members of the Georgetown University Concert Choir who've enhanced our ceremony this evening in many ways. Thank you. And I have an invitation. Please join President DeJoya and our esteemed honoree at the reception that will follow immediately in Dahlgren quadrangle. 
the honorary degree exercises for His Eminence Donald Cardinal Wuerl, Archbishop of Washington, are now officially closed. <laughs>